Hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I wanted to update you on some things that are going on with my orchids. First of all, here is my here is my blooming corner. Um, all of my orchids that are in bloom out here, I've put on this side of my grow room. Um, creates for a very beautiful display here. Um, I'm going to be showing you some new spikes. I love saying that, new spikes. And I'm also just going to give you some updates on some of my fowls. So it's December and I've got a lot of things spiking right now. This is where you really get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Um, I love to see the spike and bloom, especially in the winter time when there's nothing else outside that's blooming. It's just so wonderful to be able to grow something inside that blooms. So I was asked the other day how my orchids that are growing in moss are doing. They're doing so very well. Um, here is my little star orchid. Um, as you see, I have staked up this spike already. Um, the earlier that you can stake these up and train them to go up these stakes, the better off you'll be. Uh, one time I waited too late and I almost snapped a spike off entirely. So I learned from that experience the um, earlier that you can get these um, to train up these stakes, the happier you're going to be, the happier your plant's going to be too. So um, I cannot wait to see this rebloom. This leaf here, um, as you see, this one here on the right um, was last year's leaf and look how much longer the one on the left is. So this one is happy growing in moss. Okay, here is my intensity mini. Um, it is also spiking right here. It's not quite long enough for me to start uh, staking it up yet, but I will do that soon. But as you see, um, lots of excellent root growth. Root growth. Um, someone asked me, do I um, spray the top of the moss with water um, to keep it moist? You can if you want to. I normally wait um, to water these all at one time instead of spraying just the air roots, unless your air roots are dry. Now, if your air roots are dry, that would be a good thing to go ahead and spray them, give them a spray with water. But usually I just wait until these need to be watered and I water them all at one time instead of just uh, watering the top. And here is Buddy Fowl. And um, he has grown and I'll show you if I can find, yes, in under here on the left, that is a new spike. So all of my smaller container closed container moss orchids, they're all doing very, very well. People ask me why I tried it this way. Um, the reason why I tried these with the, with the closed bottoms is um, I didn't have fowl pots quite this size, quite this small. Um, these will probably need to be repotted in the spring into a little bit of a larger pot. And I'm gonna go ahead and order um, orchid pots for these. But at the time, I just thought I'm going to give this a try. These are in just small little containers. The top of this container is only about um, two and a half inches across. So um, this is a good way uh, to grow your miniatures that are in moss. Just make sure that um, I just make sure that I, um, when I drain them, that I drain them very thoroughly but I only need to water these about every four days. It's not bad. Okay, so here's my Baldwin's Kaleidoscope. This is in a regular orchid pot. It's in a larger pot. Your regular size fowls, you will definitely need to grow those in, um, in orchid pots, or I do anyway. Um, I've heard from people who do um, grow regular fowls in pots with no holes and they seem to do okay, but I have these pots. So um, just wanted to show you, I've gotten this new spike. I've got it staked up very early on. 
As you can see, this has a, let me move this out of the way. This one has a secondary spike right here. It just started. I let this spike just kind of grow naturally. And a lot of people like to do that. And if you like to do that, that's, that's absolutely fine. It takes a lot of space though, because you've got the plant and then you've got these flowers cascading down. So just make sure that you realize that when you don't stake these up, like I have here, this one's gonna go straight up um, that stake. When you grow them naturally, it's gonna take more room. Uh, plus I am just used to seeing foul spikes growing up a stake. So it's your own personal preference, really. Okay, over here is foul legato. And foul legato has a secondary spike and it looks like there's gonna be about four blooms on here. I probably need to go ahead and um, stake this up. I took the stake off of this one just simply because there was no need to keep it staked while it didn't have any flowers. But when it has the added weight of the flowers, it's gonna be easier for me to just go ahead and stake it up. And also, as you see right there between those leaves, that is a new spike. So my fowls that are growing in moss are really, really enjoying growing in moss. So as you see here, I've got some things that I'm gonna to use to um, stake up some of my spikes. I've, I use regular bamboo skewers, just the small ones, for my miniatures. These work very well. Also, steak skewers. I like to have these. These are very strong and I like using those. Plus just my regular um, orchid steaks. I just kind of like to have a little variety of things for, for me to use. I like the different clips. I like these. When you're first starting um, a spike up a stake, these are pliable and they bend into just about any shape and they're very handy. So I like these. So I was gonna also answer a question about kikis. Um, kikis and young plants, uh, they really like to grow in orchid grade sphangum moss, premium grade sphangum moss. Um, I've received many questions from you all about kikis and young cattleyas. What do I place those in? And I would highly recommend you get the orchid grade, not the regular brown basket moss. Um, orchid grade spangum moss. Um, orchids love to grow in moss, especially the very small ones. I think you will be really, really happy with the results that you get with the orchid grade spangum moss with your kikis and your smaller orchid plants. And I have to show you what just spiked. Look here. This is my white dendrobium that I told you I almost lost. Um, all the leaves fell off of it. Um, it looked really, really bad, and I really babied it over the summer, and um, it was the star of many of my shows this summer, as I showed you all, you know, how I fertilized this one and took care of it and gave it a lot of um, wet, dry cycles, and now it is spiking, and I am very, very happy. This is a beautiful dendrobium. When I bought it, it was with another plant that was kind of just supporting it. And then when I took it, um, when I took it out of this rotting moss, the other plant just kind of fell away. And this was the only one that was left. And you can see it has come a long way. So I just wanted you to know that this one is now spiking. I promised a lot of people I'd let them know when this one spiked. So I'm a happy, happy person today. And the sun just came out. So let's do some photos of some of my beautiful blooms. Um, here's my dendrobium that just bloomed out that I think the colors are just captivating. And my beautiful Vanda Picara Blue Delight. Um, the blooms just continue to deepen in color and they just get larger and larger by the day. So I had to share this with you. Such a beautiful, beautiful bloom. 
And another question, did the buds blast on this beautiful harlequin orchid? No, they are blooming out beautifully, I am happy to report. So the extra precautions that I took, you know, I put it in a box and then I placed a, a plastic bag over the spray of flowers and I brought it home very carefully and it is continuing to bloom out without any bud blast. So I'm very happy to report on this one. Such a beautiful wolf owl. Okay, so I've come full circle to my beautiful blooming corner over here. And I just wanted to tell you all, I hope you're having a fabulous December and you all be highly favored, deeply loved and greatly blessed. And we'll talk to you all next time.